Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode. Vintage lenses make some beautiful images. They have flaws and imperfections which add character to the images they make. And generally speaking, an image from a vintage lens is a bit more interesting to look at than an image from a modern lens, which can sometimes be a bit bland and uninteresting. But since the rise of digital mirrorless cameras, some of these old vintage lenses have become really quite expensive but the ones I'm going to show you today are not. They all make fantastic images and they're all really versatile, but perhaps the best thing about them is that they're very, very cheap. I'm talking about short kit zooms. So if you bought a camera, if you bought this camera, the Vivitar V3000, the lens that you probably would have got with it is one of these, a short kit zoom, a 28 to 70 in this case. So there's lots of them around and they're really cheap, but don't think you're getting second best if you get one of these cheap lenses. One of the lenses I'm going to show you today was used to shoot an Emmy award winning documentary, but more of that soon. So the first lens we're going to look at today is this one. This is a Vivitar lens. It's a 28 to 70 millimeter zoom and apertures are 3 f3.4 to f4.8. And by the way, when you see two aperture figures given on a zoom lens like that, they denote the maximum aperture opening at the short end and at the long end. So at the short end, this one goes to 3.4. Uh, that's the maximum aperture, whereas if you put it to the long end, the maximum aperture is f4.8, and that's why they have two numbers. This was a kit lens for this very camera, the Vivitar V3000. Let's have a closer look at the lens itself. So here is the Vivitar lens in all its short zoom sumptuousness, and this is a very well made lens. I think it's all metal actually I, I can't actually feel any plastic on there it all feels fairly cold to the touch there may be some plastic parts on it somewhere um, but it is a very nicely made lens there's the K mount and at the back is the aperture control and just beyond that we've got the zoom control that you use to change the focal length of the lens. This one's in very nice order, everything's nice and smooth, it's got a big uh, focus band here which is nice and easy to turn so all in all that's a very nicely made, very compact little lens actually. It is a, a very small example of a short zoom, it's not that much bigger than a 50mm, so a nice small lens. This is a very sharp lens also, and it resolves lots and lots of fine detail at both the long end and the short end. Some zooms do perform differently at either end, but this one is pretty sharp right throughout the range. It gives very, very nice colors. They're really pumped up and saturated, which in uh, my opinion is the best way for colours to be, that's a personal thing of course, but I do like high saturation and this lens uh, will give it. The colours have lots of depth, lots of strength, lots of body and they remind me of Olympus Suico colours actually. Um, they too are quite pumped up, quite highly saturated. Um, but it's not just the saturation, it's also the kinds of colours that it makes, the tones, very similar to the Zuiko colours. The blur on this lens is generally very nice, and the more you zoom towards the long end, the greater that blur will become, because one of the things that uh, helps to create background blur is the focal length of the lens. So the longer the focal length, the more background blur you get. So at the long end, it gives lovely, smooth, soft blur, um, bubbles from point light sources, just beautiful, lovely and soft. 
At the short end, depending on distance, it can get a little bit busy, but that doesn't happen too often. And again, depending on distance, that busyness very easily resolves into something actually really nice. So there aren't too many harsh points on this lens, and those that do happen, I've found, happen at the wide end. But this is a vintage lens, and we're not looking for perfection, at least I'm not looking for perfection, whatever that is, in a vintage lens. What I'm looking for is character. So I don't mind a bit of vignette, I don't mind a little bit of harshness in the background uh, at certain points. What I'm looking for is character, and this lens will give it to you by the bucketful. It's a very cheap lens. These lenses sell for around about £25. And for a vintage lens with loads of character, great colour, strong contrast, good sharpness, this lens is a bargain. The next lens we're going to look at is a record holder. It's the Nikon Zoom Nikkor 43 to 86 mm f 3.5. So a slightly longer zoom than you'd usually find in the short zoom range. So I guess this perhaps is best described as a mid-range zoom. Why is this lens a record holder? Well, this lens is a record holder because it's considered by many to be the worst Nikon lens ever made. And that's why I like it. This lens is an underdog. But it's no ordinary underdog. This lens was recently used to make an Emmy Award winning documentary. And the name of that documentary is Finding Home. It was, uh, it was made by YouTuber McCall Jones III. And he contacted me to let me know that he'd bought this lens for $17 and used it to make this documentary. So this is not a bad lens. This is a really nice lens. So don't listen to received opinion. Find out for yourself. This is an extremely well made lens. It's all metal and it holds up to the usual very high Nikon engineering standards. There's no looseness, there's no slop, there's no play. Everything is engineered beautifully. This is a push-pull lens, so what that means is push the front section forward to zoom in, bring it back to zoom out, and you'll see that at this point here the focal lengths are marked, so you know what focal length you're working at. A very, very well-made lens, a very, very nice lens. It has a beautiful soft colour palette, which kind of reminds me of the colour palette of the old Pentax lenses. Very restrained colours, um, push towards the blue end of things, blue-green end of things perhaps, but still preserving the reds and the browns. It's a uniquely Nikon colour signature and I really like it. It's quite unusual, it's quite striking, and it has a lovely calmness. It gives images that have a calmness and a softness. Uh, really nice. Um, it's a very sharp lens, actually. That surprised me too, uh, how sharp it is. And it really does resolve a great deal of fine detail. It has lovely soft blur that never seems to become too harsh, whether you're at the long end, the wide end, or somewhere in between. The blur, generally speaking, stays very soft. And I couldn't really find any points where I thought, mm, that blur's really jarring or really harsh. It just doesn't have that. So the blur from the lens is really nice as well. It's not a high contrast lens, but I wouldn't call it a low contrast lens either. It falls somewhere in between and the images it makes have depth and strength and body. It does have some vignetting at both the long end and the short end if you shoot it wide open. Uh, stop down the aperture one or two stops to clear that, although 
And curiously, I found that contrast dropped slightly as I closed down the aperture on this one. All in all, then, it's a really, really nice lens, and it doesn't deserve the worst Nikon lens in the world reputation. I have shot Nikon primes that didn't perform as well as this one. If this really is the worst Nikon lens in the world, then the best must be quite something. I love this lens, and it's proved itself. For me, this lens might just be the pick of the bunch. As far as cost goes, you can pick up one of these if you're patient and you look around carefully for around about £50. The next lens we're going to look at is this little zoom from Minolta. This is, what is this? A 28 to 70 zoom. So this covers the same focal length range as the Vivitar lens. And I think this is actually a bit smaller than the Vivitar lens. Yeah, it is just a little bit, about half an inch smaller. So this is a really small lens. So there's our lovely little Minolta lens. This is a really, really well made lens. I think this is all metal. I can't feel any plastic on it. Everything's quite cold to the touch. So I think this is an all metal lens. There's the Minolta MD mount, a bayonet mount. At the back you can get adapters to adapt this lens to Sony, to Micro Four Thirds, to Fuji, to all the usual mirrorless suspects. It's a rotary zoom, so again like the Vivitar, you just turn this ring. It doesn't turn too far on this one, so you've got a nice quick action to find your focal length when you want to. It does say macro on here but this isn't a macro lens it will go reasonably close and it will produce a magnification ratio of one to four so it'll get reasonably close but it's not a macro lens so a very nice little lens and very well made and very compact too if you're expecting to get minolta colors from this lens then you will not be disappointed. Minolta colours are well known to be some of the most exuberant, most saturated, most joyful colours from any lens. And this one does not disappoint. The colours from this lens are spectacular. They're really, really nice. Full of saturation. Slightly accented towards the warm end. Lovely Deep, rich, strong colours. I've never quite seen colours like those from uh, a fairly cheap, simple zoom lens. This lens will give you stunning colours time after time after time. It's also quite a sharp lens. Optically, it's very nice. It will delineate things very, very sharply and it's not a fast lens, it's not going to give you much background blur, but it will give you enough background blur to separate your subject from the background at the short end. And at the long end, of course, that's going to give you a lot more blur. Blur is very nice. It's very soft. It's very delicate. It's, it's beautiful, actually. And I, I, again, couldn't find any points where it became harsh or unpleasant or any points where I could say to myself, gosh, this image was clearly shot with a very cheap lens. It, it's just not that kind of lens. Contrast is really good and it shoots, it copes very well when you shoot into the sun. Contrast doesn't drop very much. It's very hard to wash this lens out. You have to really try to catch the sun at an angle where it will drop contrast away. Most of the time, it just maintains the image as best it can, which is pretty well. It also makes some very groovy flares, which uh, I thought worked to pretty nice effect on this shot. It vignettes quite heavily, particularly at the short end. But again, I'm not too bothered about that. I actually quite like a bit of vignette. If it's not your thing, close down the aperture a couple of stops and it will substantially disappear. A really nice little lens. Very small and compact for a zoom, 
Uh, and these lenses are now selling for around about £25. I bought this one for £25. It's got Minolta colours, it's got great sharpness, it's got great contrast and it's got very nice blur. Really, for £25, what more could you ask? Our final lens for today is this lens. This is the Kiron f2.8 28-85mm. So this is a rather faster lens than the other three. It's got that extra stop, which means that it can give you a little bit more background blur and it will work that bit better in lower light. You can open it up a little more and let more light in. The penalty for that is that this is rather bigger and rather heavier than the smaller lenses that we're looking at today. In fact, it's almost twice as big as the smallest lens we're looking at today, but no matter. This is a very, very nice lens indeed. So here's the lens itself, and I have to say this feels like a very, very well-made lens. It's really heavy, and it's all metal. You can actually feel the turning marks on the surface, which is always a really nice touch. That's been beautifully machined on a lathe there. I can't see any plastic at all in this lens's construction. This one is in Olympus OM mount, but they were made in lots of other mounts, so you're sure to be able to find one for your camera. This is another push-pull lens. So again, push to the long end and pull back to the short end. There's lots of marks on here to show you which focal length you're actually working at. This is a very sharp lens and at both the long end and the short end and all points betwixt and between it gives a very great deal of detail. Really sharp images. In fact I think it might be by a whisker the sharpest of the lenses that we're looking at today. Colours are a little flatter than the Minolta. They're not quite as wild, they're not quite as exuberant, but they're also not quite so flat as the Nikon, so this one does fall somewhere in between. Generally speaking, colours are nicely saturated, plenty of depth, plenty of body. Again, like most of these, it vignettes fairly heavily. A little bit of stopping down will fix that. There is some purple fringing apparent, uh, that can be fixed in software. It doesn't bother me too much, actually, but I know a lot of people don't like it. It can be fixed pretty easily in software. This lens will shoot pretty close. Uh, somewhere approaching macro, it's got a 1 to 4 macro ratio. So it's not really a macro lens, but it does shoot pretty close, same as the Minolta. And you can get some nice close-ups with it. Now, interestingly, this lens has some separation in its internal elements. I don't know if I'll be able to show you on here. But you may be able to see. Yes, I think you can just see in the light there, uh, just on your left, that sort of shiny part deep within the lens, semicircular shiny part. That is separation where internal lens elements that have been glued together at the factory are coming on stuck. It has got a little bit worse over the couple of years I've had this lens. It doesn't make any difference at all to image quality. So that was quite interesting to me that you can buy a lens with what looks like a fairly major flaw and it really doesn't make any difference to the images that you make. As regards cost, this lens will cost you around about £50. They're available in lots of different mounts. They'll mount to any mirrorless camera and they'll even mount to some DSLRs. And at that price, you've got a really versatile lens here with a nice wide aperture and fantastic colour representation and really good sharpness too. At that price, this lens too is a proper bargain. So there we are, four lovely little zooms, which all prove the point that vintage lenses do not have to be expensive. They've all got loads of character, they're all really versatile, and they're really, really cheap as well. So 
that's it from me for now. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell before you go. And if you enjoy the content on this channel and you'd like to help it grow and develop, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash xenography. As ever, thank you very, very much for watching and I will see you next time for some more xenography.